dear students now let us take the second chapter of the standard 12 electric potential and the capacitance now let us take the new topic potential due to the system of charges so whenever we are going to take the system of charges and we want to find out the potential due to that system of charges we are drawing the rough diagram with the charges q1 q2 q3 up to qn and uh, in this diagram these charges are given and their uh, respective position vector are given as a r1p r2p r3p same way up to rnp where p is the reference point taken so potential at the p point d to the q1 charge is given by v1 equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 upon r1p or v1 equal to k q1 upon r1p same way potential at the p point d to the q2 charge is given by v2 is equal to k q2 upon r2p same way v3 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q3 upon r3p so up to nth charge we can take the potential due to nth charge vn is equal to k q n upon r n p so ultimately potential is the scalar quantity and we can add it like a scalar addition so the resultant equation of v is given by v1 plus v2 plus v3 plus v4 up to v n now let us take the another point so resultant potential is also given by 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 in bracket q1 upon r1p plus q2 upon r2p plus up to n qn upon rnp bracket complete okay so if we have a continuous charge distribution characterized by the charge density rho we divide it as before into small volume element each of size delta v and carrying the charge rho delta v we then determine the potential due to each volume element and sum strictly speaking integration we are taking so integrate over all such contribution and thus determine this potential due to the entire distribution we have seen in chapter 1 that for a uniformly charged spherical cell the electric field outside the cell is as if the entire charge is concentrated at the center thus the potential outside the cell is given by v equal to k q upon r where small r is greater than equal to capital r where q is the total charge on the cell and r is its radius the electric field inside the cell is zero this implies that potential is constant inside the cell v equal to kq upon capital r in this way so again where small q is the total charge on the cell and capital r is its radius the electric field inside the cell is zero this implies that potential is constant inside the cell as no work is done in moving a charge inside the cell and therefore it equals its value at the surface which is equal to v equal to k q upon capital r this is the equation of the potential on the surface now let us take equipotential surface an equipotential surface is a surface with a constant value of potential at all point on the surface for a single charge small q the potential is given by the equation v equal to k q upon r or 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 into q upon r so it shows that v is constant if small r is constant thus equipotential surface of a single point charge are concentric spherical surface centered at the charge equipotential surface of a single point charge they are concentric spherical surface centered at the charge now the electric field lines for a single charge small q are radial lines starting from or ending at the charge depending on whether q is positive or negative clearly 
the electric field at every point is normal to the electropotential surface passing through that point okay the electric field at every point is normal means perpendicular to the equipotential surface passing through that point this is true in general for any charge configuration equipotential surface through a point is normal to the electric field at that point the proof of this statement is very simple if the field were not normal to the equipotential surface it would have non zero component along the surface to move a unit test charge against the direction of the component of the field work would have to be done but this is in contradiction to the definition of an equipotential surface so there is no potential difference between any two points on the surface and no work is required to move a test charge on the surface so the electric field must therefore be normal to the equipotential surface at every point equipotential surfaces offer an alternative visual picture in addition to the picture of electric field lines around a charge configuration you can see in the figure 2.10 the equipotential surface for the uniform electric field if you take the single plane okay then the uh, electric field lines they are perpendicular to that plane same way for a uniform electric field say e along the x axis the equipotential surface are planes normal to the x axis that means planes par parallel to the y z plane figure 2.10 which we have described equipotential surface for a dipole and two identical positive charges are shown in the next two figure figure 2.11a and 2.11b so negative charges at left side positive charge is at the right side between them there is some distance so that create the dipole and for that dipole the equipotential surface are shown in the figure at the figure b two equal charges positive charges are given with some distance so their equipotential surface is shown in the figure b so you can understand it very well from the given figure now let us take relation between field and the electric potential so let us consider two closely spaced equipotential surface a and b as shown in this figure with potential value v and v plus delta v so surface a is having the potential v and on the surface v b we are taking the v plus delta v potential delta v is the change in the va value of the v in the direction of the electric field e so let take the p point on this surface b surface and delta l is the perpendicular distance of the surface a from the p imagine that a unit positive charge is moved along the perpendicular from the surface b to surface a against the electric field so the work done in this process is dw is equal to e dot dl or the e dot delta l so this work equal the potential difference w by our vq and uh, we are taking q equal to 1 unit charge so va minus vb that is given by the v minus in bracket v plus delta v is equal to minus delta v is equal to e delta l so magnitude of the e is given by minus delta v upon delta l it is one type of the differentiation of potential with respect to distance you can also write it as a mode of e is equal to minus dv upon dl since dv or the delta v is negative so delta v is given by minus of delta v 
we can rewrite the equation as magnitude of E is equal to minus magnitude of delta V upon delta L that is the plus delta V upon delta L. It is the just the value. So, we thus arrive at the two important conclusion. One, electric field is in the direction in which the potential decrease stepest. Second, its magnitude is given by the change in the magnitude of potential per unit displacement normal to the equipotential surface at the point. So, in general we can write the relation between electric field and electric potential according E is equal to minus dV upon dr or the minus dV upon dl. Now, let us take the potential energy of the system of the charges. In the potential energy of the system of charges, consider first the simple case of two charges Q1 and Q2 with position vector R1 and R2 relative to some origin. You can take the origin as a uh, 0 of the x, y also. Let us calculate the work done externally in building up this configuration. This means that we consider the charges Q1 and Q2 initially at infinite and we determine the work done by an external agency to bring the charges to the given location. Suppose first the charge Q1 is brought from infinite to the point R1. There is no external field against which work needs to be done. So, work done in bringing Q1 from infinite to R1 is 0. Work done in bringing Q1 from infinite to R1 is 0 because there is no external field against which work need to be done. So, this charge produces a potential in the space given by V is equal to 1 upon 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 upon r1p where r1p is the distance of the point p in space from the location of q1 from the definition of potential work done in bringing charge q2 from infinite to the point r2 is q2 times the potential at r2 due to the q1 so, work done on Q2 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 Q1 Q2 upon R12. In other way, we can write W is equal to K Q1 Q2 upon R12. Now, here R12 is the distance between point 1 and 2. You can see in the figure between Q1 and Q2, there is a distance R12. Since electrostatic force is conservative, this work get stored in the form of the potential energy of the system. So, work is stored in the form of the potential energy. Thus, the potential energy of the system of two charge Q1 and Q2 is given by U is equal to K Q1 Q2 upon R12. K is given by 1 pi 4 pi epsilon 0. So, obviously, if Q2 was brought first to its present location and Q1 brought later, the potential energy U would be the same. In more general, the potential energy expression equation U equal to K Q1 Q2 upon R12 is uh, unaltered whatever way the charges are brought to the specific location because of path independence of work for electrostatic force because here the work that is we are taking the conservative here force is conservative force. This equation u equal to k q1 q2 upon r12 is true for any sign of the q1 and q2. If q1 into q2 greater than 0 potential energy is positive. This is expected since for like charges q1 q2 greater than 0 electrostatic force is repulsive and the positive amount of the work is needed to be done against this force to bring the charge from infinite to a finite distance apart. For unlike charges q1 q2 less than 0, the electrostatic force is attractive 
So, in that case a positive amount of work is needed against this force to take the charges from the given location to infinite distance. In other words, a negative amount of work is needed for the reverse path from infinite to the present location. So, the potential energy is negative. We can write as a u is equal to minus k q1 q2 upon r12 or equal to k q1 into minus q2 upon r12. This equation v or u is equal to k q1 q2 upon r12 is easily generalized for the system of any number of point charges. Let us calculate the potential energy of the system of three charges q1, q2 and q3 located at r1, r2, r3 respectively. To bring q1 first from infinite to r1, no work is required. Next, we bring q2 from infinite to r2 as before work done in this step is q2 into v1 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 q1 q2 upon r12. So, it is written as u12 is equal to k q1 q2 upon r12. The charges q1 and q2 produce a potential which at any point p is given by v12 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon naught in bracket q1 upon r1p plus q2 upon r2p. You can see in the figure 2.14. So, work done next in bringing q3 from infinite to the point r3 is q3 times v12 at r3. So, it is equal to q3 v12 is equal to k in bracket q1 q3 upon r13 plus q2 q3 upon r23. So, the total work done in assembling the charges at the given locations is obtained by adding the work done in different steps. So, u is equal to u12 plus u13 plus u23 is equal to 1 by 4 pi epsilon 0 in bracket q1 q2 upon r12 plus q1 q3 upon r13 plus q2 q3 upon r23. Again, because of the conservative nature of the electrostatic force or equivalently the path independence of work done, the final expression for the u equation is independent of the manner in which the configuration is assembled. So, dear student, here we are taking the three charges at the different position. When you bring them at different position, then total potential energy of the system of three charges is given by u is equal to u12 plus u13 plus u23 respectively. Okay, next time we will take the another point.